Perfect. So those of you who do not know Katie or unaware of him, her, him, my God, um, of her, she runs an amazing team down in Houston, Texas called Move Me to Texas. She is a dynamo on social media. Um, she really is a well-recognized contributor in the Tom Ferry ecosystem. She hosts a podcast that comes out on Thursdays. I already listened to it today. And uh, she is a mentor and friend to me and a new mom. So Riley was just born, what, six, eight weeks ago? Uh, February 7th. So whatever that is, the math. I, now, I think I'm allowed to talk in months now instead of weeks. I don't really know what the what the rule is. Uh, you know, parents are like, my, my child is 36 months old. So I don't know. I don't know what the rules are, but she's like, she's born on February 7th. You guys can do the math. Well, we are super glad to have you here this week and want to recap the real estate video blueprint. It was an amazing event down in Houston last weekend. Joe, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, this is the second year, uh, Katie Day, Tim Macy, they host the Real Estate Video Blueprint event. It was in Houston. Uh, I was there last year and this year. Um, it's phenomenal. Like, it is such high level. Some of the people that are doing some of the biggest stuff in social media, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all of that, and they're literally sharing everything that they know. So it's very high level. Some of the breakout labs were really amazing because you can get really intimate with uh, some of the hosts and speakers and that type of thing and get your questions answered. Katie, do you have, uh, is there any of the pre-sale tickets left? If there are, I, I dropped that link because it was definitely cheap. There we go. Uh, that and the not clickable. There's a link for next year. They're doing some pre-sale tickets that are wildly inexpensive. If you're looking to grow in video, social media, anything like that, definitely go. And it's just a good time as well. You know, some, some events that I go to are kind of dry. This is fun. Like this is a really, really fun event. So I would, uh, I'd recommend going next year, but Katie, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we kind of want to go over like a recap, some of the high level stuff. You know, I know I learned an absolute ton, had an amazing amount of really great takeaways, lots of aha moments and that type of thing. Would love interaction from all of you. Anything that, you know, you guys have questions about that you're looking at doing in social media, any issues that you're having in social media, like, you know, throw your questions out there. I'd also love for as many people to turn on their cameras so I can see some smiling faces. And it's always a, always a good part of all this, even if you're still in your bathroom, it's okay. <laughs> So. Just we'd, we'd like to be full, not necessarily fully clothed, but fully covered is the is the request <laughs> here, um, unless it's not that kind of call, but I'm, I'm under the impression it's that kind of call. So cover it up, you know, uh, even if you're still getting ready, that's cool. Um, but, you know, if you're like Ramsey and you're driving, probably don't turn on your camera, focus on the road. But thanks for the warm welcome, Ramsey, but focus on driving. Oh, wait, you have a Tesla, don't you? Um, anyways, um, yeah, my name is Katie. Um, glad that you guys are here. Happy to be a part of this call. I uh, love what Joe and Austin are doing up there. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically we had the real estate video blueprint, um, last weekend and we kind of dug into a lot of different social media and video and content. Um, but also things that people are doing kind of behind the scenes, the videos that you don't send out to your, to, to the world via social media, right? So one-to-one -one video, me sending a video to Steven, um, directly, me sending videos to my clients to update them about the process throughout throughout the transaction and different stuff like that. So, um, you know, I think that we we focus in on on social media and and videos that go out to the public, but there's also videos you can do, um, you know, that are that are more one to one and more transactional or not transactional, but throughout the transaction process. Um, so just by by show of hands um, or or dropping in the chat, um, what platforms are you guys on, right? Like um, as far as social goes, so we can kind of know where to direct the conversation today. Um, you know, if if you're on YouTube, drop a, a Y in the chat um, or, or give me a hand raise. Um, would love to to see. We've got one person, Austin. All right, there we go. Got a couple of people on YouTube. Back is on Instagram and TikTok, Insta, IG um insta ig tiktok okay cool well so yeah like if everyone was on one adrian's on all three instagram why youtube tiktok instagram 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 facebook facebook all three karina okay cool so yeah i mean i think joe austin we can kind of 
you know, recap a little bit and kind of talk about um, all the platforms. But if, you know, we had like one specific that everyone was on, definitely wanted to like make sure that we were, you know, aware of that. Um, well, Katie, you, you, you touched on, you know, the one-to-one -one thing. And that's something yeah. that, you know, I saw Jesse Peters talk about last year uh, at the event. And he spoke about it again this year. And it's, those one-to-one -one videos are so huge. I mean, what, what he spoke about last year, I don't, I don't remember if he touched on it this year, but it was literally using your Facebook for people's birthdays and sending them a personalized video text message. And if you're not comfortable on camera, it is probably the easiest way to get comfortable on camera for sure. because there's not an audience. It is just one-to-one. -one. And I started doing that, you know, last year, right after the event. And I've, I've always been semi-comfortable on camera, but it, it was a game changer for me in being able to have more communication with my clients throughout the transaction using video because text only goes so far. Yeah, no, I mean, I would agree. And so for those of you that are like, what are they talking about? It's basically if I'm, you know, communicating with Joe, I'm going to open up my phone selfie style. And basically like, hey, Joe, what's going on? Thank you so much for having me on your mastermind today. It was an absolute blast. It's always so good to see you, blah, 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 blah. And then I hit send, right? And so I'm either sending that to him via text, but I think the, the hack on that is sending it to him, you know, if we're connected on a social platform, mainly Instagram, maybe Facebook, would be sending it to him as a DM on that platform, right? And because then he's going to then either send me a video back or shoot me a text back or shoot me, you know, a text message back saying, hey, it was so great to see you, blah, 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 always fun to collaborate, da, 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 whatever. And the algorithms on Facebook or Instagram or whatever platform it is are going to be like, hmm, Joe and Katie are communicating. They must, they must know each other, right? And then my content and his content are both going to show higher on the platform. Do you guys ever see that? I, I send a message to Carla and then suddenly Carla sees me on her feed all the time, right? So, you know, if you're not communicating with, with clients or potential clients or friends or, you know, colleagues like on this call um, via social media platforms, I would start doing that. I would make that an effort. Um, but the one-to-one -one videos, I think are really important to, to, you know, show your face, right. And, and get that practice on video for sure. Yeah. But if you, if you want to prime the algorithm, if you got something important to say, mm -hmm. go out and send a bunch of, you know, messages, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, it does a really good job of it. Your stuff 100% is going to show up more and you're going to be more connected with those folks. So don't, sure. just like, don't just comment, send a DM. It goes a lot further. Yeah. And you don't, and you don't need to be polished. You can just go ahead and do it. Whether you've done your hair or your makeup or whatever it is, get on there and do it. And you, as Katie said, will become more comfortable doing it. Austin sends me videos all the time with his hair and makeup not done. So exactly, you know, it's uh, it it takes courage, but he does it. So we're we're proud of him for it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so much the authenticity, you know. It, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, and that's so kind of if we if we kind of want to go down the rabbit hole of priming the algorithm. Um, you know, for those of you that are on Instagram, one of the things that we talked about was, you know, things that you can do to help your content potentially perform better, um, and reach more people. And so one of them is sending DMS, um, to people, they can be text DMS, but video DMS are obviously better, right. To, to have that personal connection, um, as well as longer watch time on that, you know, on the, on the message or they're in the message for a longer period of time. Um, so you would want to do that prior to posting. Right. So if I hop onto Instagram and I'm getting ready to post a, a, a photo or a reel or whatever the content is that I want to post, I'm going to, you know, shoot a message over to Joe, maybe something to, to, to Austin, maybe something to Steven, maybe something to Amber, then I'll post my post and then I'll go in and I'll respond to comments and, and continue to stay on the platform and engage on the platform. Right. And so that kind of shows Instagram that you're there. Um, and again, kind of primes the algorithm to hopefully um, put your content in front of Joe and Austin and 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 Amber and whoever else I Becca, whoever else I said I was sending messages to. Um, the other thing that is important to use if you're if you're putting up stories um, is the stickers, right? So when you go into Instagram to post a story, there's music stickers, there's uh, little polls where you can put in yes or no, there's quizzes, there's uh, the slider where you can pick a little emoji where people move the slider, like the, the fire emoji of how, you know, hot this new listing is or whatever other, uh, you know, fun thing you decide to do. All of those things help the algorithm. Um, I, I know I personally have gotten a lot of notifications lately that say, 
you know, uh, Mike just used a music sticker in his story. Check it out here. And you can click it and it opens up his story. So Instagram itself is, is notifying other users when you're using these features. Um, so they really like that. Um, I like the questions feature. Uh, little known fact about the questions feature, you can actually put in your own questions and answer them, right? Um, you know, people are like, no, well, you know, yeah, you know, so people are always like, oh, I don't want to use the questions feature because because none of my clients are going to ask me a question. Well, that's fine. One, I always ask questions when I see it, right? Just because like, you know, it's like, you know, you're, you're inviting people to your birthday party and no one coming, you know? So I, I'm always going to put a question into someone's thing when I see it. It may or may not be serious. You know, it may be like, you know, would you rather fight a duck or a, you know, horse or something, I don't know, something crazy like that. But um, I always try to put at least something in there, but you can put your own questions in there and answer them, right? Um, so no one needs to know that it's not coming from a client. Obviously, if it's like super technical and you're using like realtor jargon, people are probably going to know, right? But you can always, always, you know, at least start it out that way. Um, if, if people aren't asking you questions in there um, and no one's going to know because it's an anonymous when you post it, right? It just shows the little questions thing. So little hack that there. <laughs> little hack there for uh, for everyone. Um, but yeah, using using um, the DMs and, and communicating and working the platform before you actually post is, is a great way to kind of get the algorithm going. And then the other thing, again, is using the features um, that Instagram actually has in the platform, you know, they want you in there and they want you using those. So I think those are two, you know, important things to kind of get, get things going when you're posting, um, on at least Instagram. Yeah. The, uh, stickers was huge. That slider bar, you get a notification every time somebody uses it. So if you're posting a new listing or a property walkthrough or anything like that, and you put the slider bar on there, everybody that uses it, you should then be replying to them. And again, that is going to prime the algorithm even more, make your stuff in the future show up even more, but it is starting a conversation. And that was one thing that Tim talked about that I really loved. And I'm, Katie, do you want to say, because I'm probably going to butcher it, about conversations? What did he say it was, it about was conversations? Not about, um, not about having conversations, but being in conversation. Tim just okay. always uses so many words. Um, no. Yeah, no. So, it, was, so... it was really good. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's being in conversation with people and, you know, having a flow in your DMs and that type of thing and using them frequently. Yeah, Something for sure. For sure. Well, and so I think... when he said it. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you ask him to say it again. He's like, I have no idea what I said. I blacked out. Right. But um, no, so... I think a lot of times there's there's two things that I want to acknowledge with with social media and with content. And the first is that I think everyone's like, I want. Um, sorry, I just saw Adrian's comment in the chat. Now everyone on this call is going to know I'm answering my own questions. Don't tell, don't tell on me, kind of thing. Uh, no one, no one needs to know. No one's going to know. But anyways, um, so I think there's two things to acknowledge with social media. One is that you know, people are like, oh, well, I want to go viral or, oh, only 20 people watched my video or only a hundred people watched my video. And I think one of the things that you want to ensure you're doing with social and with video is focusing in on what your audience is. Right. And so I've been talking to a lot of people lately post-conference of like, you know, Hey, I really want to do YouTube. I really want to get on Instagram. I really wanted this. I really wanted that. And when I'm like, well, who's your target audience? They're like Houstonians. Like, okay, well, that's like great, but we have like almost 5 million people in Houston. Like if you're trying to talk to all 5 million people, your, your message isn't going to resonate, right? And so getting super specific on who your audience is, I think is important. And when you do that, if you have 20 views or a hundred views or whatever it is, I would almost guarantee you that in that 20 or hundred people that are actually viewing your content, if you're speaking to a very specific market or very specific target audience, you're hitting the right people, right? So if it's first time home buyers that are, you know, uh, millennials that are moving out of their first apartment and into their first home, right? And you make content around that, really focus in on that. And your 20 views or 100 views will likely be people in that target market, right? And then the other thing that people say a lot is that, you know, they're not getting like, what should my call to action be? Because I'm not getting, I'm not getting, you know, the conversion. I'm not getting people that are DMing me saying, I'm ready to buy a house. I'm ready to sell a house. I'm ready to blank, I'm ready to transact. And that's what Joe was saying was like, we're inviting them to conversation, right? We're trying to get um, them to, to raise their hand, to have a conversation, not raise their hand to say, Hey, I want to buy today. 
right? I hope I hope that differentiation makes sense, right? And so, you know, bringing them to conversation or or using those those polls or u- using those sliders or whatever it may be to to spark conversation of of you know, a consumer voting on that. And then you ask them, oh, well, what does your dream home look like? Or, oh, you know, what does blank look like for you? And starting a conversation um, will be a lot more, you know, beneficial than you sitting there trying to be like, well, if you're ready to buy today, then DM me. If you're ready to buy today, then DM me, you know, Um, what are things that you can do to spark conversation? And I'm looking Chelsea's slides. I'm going to see if I can send link these in the, in the chat it's too big to preview of course it is yeah. um but i will paste it here um she had a bunch of actually I just, i'm going to download it and share my screen if if the the guys will let me share my screen uh yeah i'm all i'm allowed you guys gave yep. me power without even yep. having to ask that's that was a chelsea bold was move. amazing i didn't know of chelsea prior to her speaking and she blew my mind it was phenomenal um, the file's downloading. It's taking a while because it's also too big to preview. So thanks, Joe, for popping in on that. But yeah, so um, 10 seconds left. So Chelsea Pites is uh, a terrific presenter, but she also helped me relax a little bit in that it doesn't necessarily matter how many times you post. There are people who tell you, oh, you got to do this every day. You got to have this many stories and all of this kind of stuff. She's really focused on creating content that's going to resonate with her audience. And over and over this weekend, we heard the word audience. And it's important to identify your audience, understand what's going to resonate with them, but also understand where they live digitally, where you can reach them. Yeah. And so Chelsea, Chelsea was excellent. Yeah. So her thing, let's see. She did her slides in PowerPoint. I haven't used PowerPoint since like 1995. So give me a second here. Yeah, she was, I mean, I think I got more notes from her than anybody else actually. Well, and so her thing, uh, similar to what Joe was saying with with us, with Tim's Tim's point, um, which I think you might've just taken from Chelsea, but to, for Tim's point uh, and Chelsea's, Chelsea's presentation, her thing was calling them into action, not a call to action, right? And so in your captions or, um, you know, in what you're actually physically saying on a video, here are some things that you can say, right? Do you agree? If this was helpful, share it with a friend. Tell me which, you know, one of like, if you have points that you're making surprised you the most, if you felt this, drop me a insert emoji here, you know, did this make you feel, did you know this hack? Check out the caption for more information or for a detailed list, Um, you know. Would you like more content like this? Can you relate? And these are different things than just saying like, well, if you're ready to buy or sell, slide into my DMs. Like, you know, how many, how many times have we gone to an appointment, um, you know, that someone found you on social or someone found you on, on, on YouTube or wherever it may be. And like, they've never commented on your, on your content. They've maybe never even liked it, but you go into that appointment they're like, well, you said in this video that you should blah, 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 blah. When you sell your home and you're like, God, I made that video like over a year ago. You know, so they, they're consuming your content, right? Um, and so, you know, things like these may, um, you know, uh, spark conversation more so than you just being like, if you're ready to buy or sell, DM me. Well, I mean, that, this brings resonates. Up a point. that brings up a really good point too, that so many people consume, but don't interact. And don't be so concerned about, you know, giving likes and that type of thing, because there are so many people out there that, love social media and are on social media constantly, but they don't like your posts. It doesn't mean that they're not seeing it. It doesn't mean that it wasn't helpful that, yeah, I, that was, that was a big takeaway for me as well. For sure. Yeah. Chelsea's Instagram. She puts out a ton of like tips and social media. She's a coach in the real estate space, helping real estate professionals, like be more authentic and get on video. Um, so if you haven't checked her out, she puts out a ton of great content. Austin just dropped her Instagram in the chat, um, you know, just to, to help people be more authentic. And again, as, as Austin said, like, you don't have to post every day. Right. Um, so yeah. What she else also- you got? She also shared there was a uh, there's a difference between personal and private, and yes. that, that really struck with because I brought my wife down as well. So she owns a home staging and design company. She's not exactly in real estate, but she's doing more you know social media and all of that. 
And she's, she's very private with our home life and doesn't really like me posting even like the inside of our house sometimes. And that, that struck a chord with her as well. And it gave her a much different perspective on it because people do want to see your day-to-day -day life. It shouldn't all be real estate. There is certain things that people do need to get to know you through real estate and sharing some of the personal stuff, but not the private stuff can go a really, really long ways. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I think that it's like, it's a personal decision on how much of your, of your life you want to share. Right. And so like, I know, um, you know, my good buddy, Stephen Kim up in Toronto on Instagram, since it's a, a way more open platform, you know, like if your if your profile is public, anyone can see it, anyone can follow. Um, he doesn't put his kids faces on his Instagram. So if like his, he puts like little emoji, you know, glasses on them or a ghost face or like something like that. Um, you know, there's a, a local restaurant here that their kid, they, they do the same thing. They put an emoji over her face and like, she's, I think four or five years old at this point and her, her name on social media, like when they're referring to their kid is emoji baby. Like they don't call her Becca, they call her emoji baby. And so one day I was talking to the owner of the restaurant and they were telling me about, you know, Becca. I'm like, yeah, and Becca this and Becca that. And I was like, I'm sorry, like who's Becca? They're like, oh, that's our daughter. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't actually know her name. I thought it was Emoji Baby. Like, I mean, clearly it's not, but I was like, I thought it was Emoji Baby. Cool to, to finally know her name, what her name is, you know? And, and I've known them for three years, right? And like, they've had this kid, but like, I didn't know their kid's name, right? But I consider them to be friends. Um, so yeah, it, it's totally up to you on what you share, but I do think you do need to share some personal things about you right? Because that's what people can relate to. Um, and that's where people will feel as if they know you and want to, you know, that know, like trust factor, right? Um, you want them to know, you know, some of what you're about. So whether that's pets, family, children, you know, uh, gym, food, you know, if you, if you volunteer in your, your local area or things like that, it looks like Becca has her hand raised. So what do you got, Becca? Hello. Yes. I'm curious when you're talking about sharing personal stuff, should that be more so like in Instagram stories and Facebook stories, or should you focus, not focus, but should you also include personal stuff in like reels and more permanent stuff that lasts longer? Or should you just focus on like real estate for permanent stuff that stays on your feed? Um, um, I think, it, I think it's an 80, 20 rule for sure. Yeah. No, I mean, it's 80% of your content should be more personal than real estate focused. If your page is nothing but real estate focused, I, I'm sorry, it's boring. You know, like I, I, I don't really like a lot of real estate content. Like I want to see people's personal lives. I mean, like I know that Katie is the queen of kicks. Like sh her shoes are always on point. She posts about that a lot. When she announced that she was having a baby, it was around shoes. So it's how can you bring your personal life into that real estate world as well? So I think it's finding the balance of both, I guess. Yeah, I would, I would agree with Joe. I think that like, when you log on to someone's Instagram, and it's like house, 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 just listed, just sold house, house, house. It's like, okay, like, you know, who, who am I even working with here? Right. And, but if you log on and, and like, like, I think you do a good job of like, you're showing up in your videos, but they still are real estate related. So like, maybe what are other things that you would layer in, right? I'm not saying scrap your entire content. Mm -hmm. What are other things that you could layer in that are showing a little bit into your life? And like in your stories, I know like you enjoy going out with friends, you enjoy doing things. And like, I'm seeing that in your stories of like, I'm trying out this new restaurant. I just met up with a friend for, you know, drinks or whatever it is. So like, maybe it's highlighting that local restaurant, you know, and you like similar to, you know, um, like a Tyler Hassman property video, like, Hey, I'm outside of this new restaurant. Can't believe they just opened. This is awesome. Blah, 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 whatever. Like come with me as we, as we, you know, have happy hour. And that's you sharing something that's like part of your life. Right. Um, you it's, know, hard. And, it's, yeah. it's hard to do. It, it's hard to share personal stuff. I struggle with it constantly. Half of my personal stuff is typically something about my kid. Like it, it just, that's typically what it is. And I know I need to get more personal. I know I need to be putting more about like myself out there. So it's, it's difficult. It really is. I, I tell you what though, Joe, like people um, would much rather see your kid I know. probably than you, bro. I like <laughs> I'm fully aware that it's like, it's like Riley, <laughs> which is my child, then noodle, which is the dog. And then like shoe pictures, food pictures, gym photos, and then me. Like, so I'm, I'm fully aware of like that my, my spot on my content totem pole just keeps dropping. Um, 
but you know, I'm okay with that, I guess. Cool. Thanks guys. Yeah. So, all right, Tom Ferry, he spoke as well. And I'll be honest, that's the first time I've ever seen Tom speak live. And I mean, I had like full body chills the entire time. It was, it was unbelievable. Like, I mean, I've seen, you know, I listen to his podcast. I watched, you know, webinars, all kinds of stuff, but man, seeing him live was something else. Um, Katie, do you want to go into some of, some of that stuff? Yeah, no, I thought it was really cool. Cause like, I mean, um, he's a lot different in a room of 300 people than he is in a room of 6,000. Right. And so for a lot of us, you know, at, at the events that we go see Tom at, you know, he's, uh, he was a lot more raw uh, and real than he would be at like a summit or, you know, a, a, an event like that. Um, so, I mean, he, he went into a couple of different things. Um, I think, you know, one of the, his focuses of the conversation was listings and like, none of us have enough listings. You know, you may have more listings than you had at this time last year, but that's still not enough. Right. And so focusing it on, on, you know, the activities to generate more listings. And then on the content side, his thing was like, you know, content, if you're already doing it, you know, continue to do it and see where else you can put that content and, and, you know, kind of continue to, to push it out into other places. Um, but if you're not doing it to not take the eye off the prize and off the things that you're already doing, like it, he used the, the metaphor of lasagna, right. That it's, it's content should be a layer of your lasagna, right. Um, too many people go to an event like video blueprint and they're like, well, screw it. I'm no longer going to do my uh, you know, expired calls that have been getting me five listings a month, I'm going to start making videos and talking about selling your home. And they stop doing the things that work and start trying to do something new and have that shiny object syndrome. Right. And so his thing was like, you know, clearly he puts out, you know, more content than any of us, right. They, he has, he has podcasts going out every day. He has videos going out every day, short form, long form, YouTube, TikTok, like all the things. Right. But that's on top of his entire sales team and on top of all of the things, you know, his in-person events on top of all of these things. And so when we look at that from a real estate perspective, like what have you been doing that's working, continue to do that and then layer on, you know, additional uh, social media and additional video and additional content. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was good. It was a good message there. Another presenter who amazed me was Tyler Hasman. You know, I, yeah. I, I look, I look at this kid who's been in the business just a little while and, and he leaned into one pillar incredibly well. And it's something we can all do. Katie, do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, for sure. I'm getting his Instagram here pulled up real quick. And so he basically, I got it. I'll drop it in there. Okay. I just dropped it. So he basically, um, let's see, this is his Instagram. He's put out 471 posts, um, but basically he started out in real estate, um, you know, and has a great story. Like he bought a, a bike off of Facebook marketplace. Like he didn't have a car, um, you know, he's in Alberta, Canada. So a little, little further North than, than most of y'all. Right. So like, you know, the weather, right. Um, and so he basically decided that he needed to figure out what his brand was and it's his hat. As you can see, he's like a Pharrell wannabe here with his hat on. Um, and, and just does these videos where he, let's see, I don't have sound. $2,000 gets you in Texas. Check it out. And so he basically just does these videos where he does an intro outside of the house and then he flips the camera at, around and in one take, he goes and videos the entire property with a, his phone on a, on a gimbal. And then speeds up and slows down the video throughout the throughout the thing. And if I had it on, he would he normally does a little voiceover like, oh, and check out this bathroom. It's got a tub and a blah 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 whatever. This is not a very compelling home. This is like a starter home in Houston, um, you know. And he and then at the end of almost every video, he's like, "What do you think? Would you live here?" Right. And it's a super simple thing. It's a super simple concept. But Tyler did. 352 of these videos in a year, right? So most of you are like, oh, that's something I could do. I'm going to do it. And you do one a week for two or three weeks, and then you never do one again, right? He went all in on this, right? He would go to uh, model home communities, right? They have, I guess, a lot of construction in his area, new construction, and he would video all of the model homes, right? And so he says it normally takes about 20 to 30 minutes per house, 
to video, to, to storyboard it in his head and then to video it. And then he edits it later, but he can go to a model home park and get 10 homes in a day, right? And then there's his content for the next week and a half. And guys, um, yeah, he did 62 deals last year. His first year of real estate. And his one pillar, his one layer of the lasagna, and that was, that was the, uh, that was the thing when like Tom, cause he and Tom talked for a little bit. was that, was that in front of everyone or was that, that, was, that yeah. was in front of everyone? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, Tyler, yeah. Tyler is not capturing people's emails. He is not doing the best job with follow-up. Like he could be adding a lot of layers to his business, but he still just through doing just these videos sold 60 some properties in his first year. He built yeah. a following. He built a brand too. You know, that's something else is, you know, he, he has his hat. His hat is his brand. And yeah. I mean, it was even a joke of him starting a OnlyFans and doing the same videos, but without the hat. Without the hat. <laughs> um, so Adrian put in the chat, how would you approach realtors about this if you don't have a ton of content? And so I think there's two things. One is any vacant listing in your market. I would contact the listing agent and ask if you can, you know, video the property. Um, a lot of them will agree, right? Some won't, but a lot of them will agree and say, that's fine. The other thing is new construction model homes. I would say 99% of builders will allow you to come market their communities. There are a few builders out there that don't love realtors, so they may not, right? But 99% of realtors will allow you to. Um, what he also said he does is if he's going out to show a client, he'll show up five minutes early, 10 minutes early, 15 minutes early and get that first home, right? And, and and get video of that. So he's, you know, adding it into his schedule in a time that's convenient for him. If he knows he's going to be touring the property, he can get that first and last home, um, you know, after talking to the listing agent. Um, and then, you know, depending on in your area, I know a lot of you are um, in the Minnesota area, but not everyone is on this call. Like it could also be, you know, brokerage listings as well. Right. So, um, one thing to keep in mind is it's really important to attribute the listing to the listing agent. Yeah. And when you're approaching that listing agent say, Hey, I would love to promote your listing, help you sell it, get yeah. you more traffic. And, uh, what I'm planning to do on this is to book the, the showing first. So book the showing and then let the listing agent know, hey, I'm going to be out there. Can I shoot some video and help you sell the listing by promoting it? Yeah. That way they already show, they already know that you are A, a licensed realtor and B, serious about what you're doing. Do you book yeah. it as a showing or as an agent preview? Agent preview, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's okay. good. No worries. I, li I like that move. I mean, that's upfront. Hey, the, now the tour comes in. 10 seconds later, now you're sending them a text message. That's smart. Yeah. 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 I would try to try to make sure you're doing vacant as much as possible, you know, um, just because obviously with with occupied homes, like displacing the seller for a few hours or whatever, you know, um, gets gets tough. But um, yeah. Cool. And then my, I, have, I have one more question. Um, so how where are you giving them the shout out? Are you doing it usually in like the copy within the written text of the post or, you know, real or are you doing, you know, in the beginning, are you saying, hey, this is so and so's listing with this brokerage, let's go check it out or where, where, where's the best place to put it in there and make it seamless so it doesn't seem like it's, you know, because you, you want your social media, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I would, I would put it in the caption. And honestly, down at okay. the bottom of the caption listing presented by, you know, whatever their yeah. name is. Yeah, yeah okay. I would put it, I would put it at the bottom um, of the mm -hmm. caption. Um, we, okay. we, for a while here in Houston did new construction uh, videos in our farm. So like in, in where I, where I lived, had a lot of new construction. So I hit up every single listing agent to ask them if we could go video their listing. Um, and I would say 90% of them said yes. Right. And most of them didn't want to be in the video at all. Or, you know, there's a key, here are the keys, go do it, you know? And so at the bottom of all of those, it would say, you know, listed by Carissa, you know, with ABC brokerage. Um, but I mean, if you're, if you're in the video and, and it's on your social, the, the probability of them contacting you is, is definitely much higher. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, in, it's, go ahead. It's showing that you're out there viewing properties too. I mean, which is a huge part of it. I mean, it, it goes, it's a, 
it's a throwback to Brad McCollum starting. He wasn't yeah. a luxury listing agent, but he started doing luxury videos. And if what you put out there, as far as your content goes with like what types of properties, that's what people, you know, perceive that you are doing. So, you know, go for the higher end properties and increase your price point. Yeah. The first video he did was for another agent. And we always laugh for like that agent now that like Brad's like the number one agent in Alberta luxury market. We're like, that agent's probably so pissed that she agreed to let you now that you're taking all the listings, but you know, that's beside the point. Um, I, I had another point on the, oh, you know, if it's, if you're doing it for another agent, so say like Austin was going to video one of Joe's listings. I think it is cool when you're like, this is my buddy, Joe's listing, you know, kind of thing. Um, so that's something that like, you know, if it's the same brokerage or if it's, you know, something like that, then potentially calling out the agent in your video. Um, but then with the builders, I know that at least in Tyler's videos, he's like, this is, you know, ABC builders, you know, newest model home. Let me know what you think kind of thing. Well, and, uh, Katie, can you pull up Tyler's again? Because yeah. he did one of, he did multiple videos while he was in Houston. He did a video with Katie and it's Katie's listing. Katie opened the door. So there's also the opportunity that you can highlight that agent. Hey, if you want to be in the video, we're happy to have you there. Yeah, just most of them. And this is one where Dilla, we have this unique main living space that has an eye-catching ceiling. So he has like the voiceover throughout and the captions. But um, most agents don't want to, right? And right. so when I've approached other agents, hey, Joe, can I do a video you're listening? They're like, well, do I have to be there? Do I have to be in the video? No, man. Okay, cool. And go right ahead. Katie, can you go sound up for the end? Because I, I do love his his constant end hook of, tell me what you think, would you live here? In the morning here and having this as your closet. Now heading back all the way to the front of the home, I wanted to show you this bright office. As we head upstairs, there is a massive family flex room. And furthermore, up here, there are three bedrooms and three bathrooms. We can all After do this, seeing this tour, let us know in the comments. Would you live here? And, you know, your hook is typically at the beginning of a video, but his hook is kind of at the end in a way, because it's consistent with every single video. Well, 90% of the videos anyway, that's how he ends them. Yeah. Um, cap cut is what he uses for video editing, free. And he films all of this on his iPhone. The gimbal, DJI gimbal, they're a hundred bucks basically. So the barrier to entry to doing something like this is wildly small and pretty simple. It just takes some time reaching out to agents, making some connections, and it can it can do a lot for your social media. I just dropped the the uh, gimbal in the uh, in the chat. I would recommend buying it. You know yeah. when you when you try to hold your phone still, you know, when you're like, all right, I'm gonna hold my arm and hold and then do it. It's like, this is what the viewer sees, you know? Um, so I would recommend, um, Amber, if you click on the top link that I dropped in the chat, I'll redrop it in the chat. Um, the, if you go to the real estate video blueprint site, um, we have the, um, slides and everything uploaded. Um, so if you download the presentation slides, um, Basically for Tyler, let me pull up his slides here real quick. Yeah, most of have... is when you're shooting video, go on the 0.5 mode. Yep. It's the wider screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here, let me share my screen again. Um, so yeah, 62 deals, 352 deals posted or videos posted, but um, 0.5 zoom. And then you're going to shoot in 4K 60 frames per second. And so basically when you pull the camera, you're going to zoom it out. And that's where it gets that wide angle lens. And one nice little trick is he shoots the beginning with the rear facing camera. So you're not shooting it in selfie mode. You've got the rear facing camera. You've got to practice a little bit, practice in your own home so that you get used to the movement of it. But you hold it up above you in rear facing mode and then just turn and go yeah yeah practice at your own house do a couple of video walkthroughs of your own home and see how it feels i mean and it's you know jesse peters talks about a lot don't compare 
your first, second, third, fourth, fifth chapter to somebody else's 25th chapter. You know, Tyler's first videos, they weren't quite as good as this. This is. These are easy videos to create without a doubt, but they've gotten a little bit more polished over time as he's found his rhythm with it. And you just have to start somewhere. 350 plus videos later, he's gotten a little bit better at this. So. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> So uh, some, something else that I found as uh, really interesting is that not all of your videos need to be to clients or prospects. And so Gia Silva talked about using your videos in the sales process. And uh, Jesse Peters talked about using your videos in communication with other agents throughout the transaction, both of which can be super helpful in making a smooth transaction or make a, tr a transaction run more smoothly. For sure. <clears throat> For sure. So yeah, the um, basically, if you think about the escrow or the contract process, how many times are you answering questions over and over and over again, right? When someone initially goes under contract, you're saying the same things over and over and over again, right? When you have a seller that you're getting ready to put the house on the market, right? You're going to get photos and then you're going to, you know, prep the listing and then you're going to this and then you're going to that, right? You almost always go through a very similar sales process. Obviously there's bumps along, along the way and things don't always go the same way, but there are many parallels between every transaction. So Gia's main thing is well, not her main thing, but one of her things is that she has transaction process videos. So for every step of the transaction, she has a video explaining what's happening and what's coming next. And she sends those to the clients with those, with those templated emails of like, you know, Hey, we're getting ready to list your property. So these are the things you need to do now that your property's on the market. This is what you need to expect. Now that we're under contract, this is what happens now that the, you know, inspection periods over, this is what happens. Right. And so that's not taking away from the communication that she's already doing, but it's prepping the client for that communication. So like who here has a pre-listing presentation that they send out to a seller before they go out to a property for their listing appointment? Austin. All right. So you guys get, get a pre-listing presentation. Yeah. yeah let's, <laughs> let's get that. Let's get that going. But when you send out a pre-listing presentation, Austin, when, when did you start doing this? When did you start doing that? I've done it in different forms for five years, probably. And it evolves. Uh, I'm currently working on moving it over to high note. Okay. I'll uh, send you mine. But um, prior to that, when you didn't have one, how long were your listing appointments? Oh, they were, could be two hours. Now with a pre-listing presentation, when they already have all the information, whether they look at it all or not, how long are the appointments? 45 to 60 minutes. Yeah, right. So he got an hour back in his day by sending the seller, hey, here's all of the stuff we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about marketing. We're going to talk about time on market. We're going to talk about pricing. We're going to talk about blah, 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 right? When they have all of that prior to the appointment, then the conversation goes a lot smoother. They also see that he's organized and, and all of these other things. And so same thing with the transaction process video. If I'm sending my seller the list of, okay, we just hit the market. These are the things to keep in mind. Open houses, showings, lockbox. Like what are all the questions a seller asks you? I'm still going to call you and go over all of this, but if you've already read it all, that conversation is going to be a lot smoother and they have something to go back to, to reference when they're like, Joe said something about showings. What was it that we needed to do before showings? Oh, clean our freaking house, right? But if it's all in a video and all in a bullet point list that gets emailed to them, they have somewhere to reference, you know, how many times has a seller called you where they're like, I'm so sorry, I know you told us this, but, and asks you the same question that they've already asked you 14 times, right? So you're giving them a resource to, to reference in addition to communicating with you. Um, and I, we've, we've had those videos for a while. Um, I, I want to continue to add more. I actually was writing down. I'm like, ah, shoot, we need to, we need to shoot this one, this one, and this one, right. To add to the, to the transaction process. And Katie, I know you use high note. Um, I do as well. I'm not using it as high of a level as you are, but anybody that doesn't know about high note, it's like $10 a month. And it is a wildly powerful tool for exactly what Katie is talking about. Uh, there's a lot of agents that present their offers with high note as well. Yep. Oh, so it's, I would look into it. Definitely. I'm trying to, I've got a link for it. Nice. Does anybody have anything that they want to talk about? Any challenges that they're having in social media, things that are working, things that are not working? 
I mean, we've we've just kind of been spewing out a bunch of stuff. So love to help out in any type of way. We with, have two minutes for questions. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna. Yeah, <laughs> we've got more than that. So a few minutes, <laughs> few minutes anyway. Um, I would who's got something they're struggling with in video? I would say staying consistent. I think that's the biggest hurdle. Like Katie said, you'll do videos for like two weeks and all of a sudden you'll stop and never get back to it. So how do you stay consistent? So Joe made the comment earlier of like, you know, if whether you feel like you're in your chapter one or three or five or whatever it is and and looking and seeing someone that's putting out, you know, like Tyler, 350 videos in a year, you're like, man, I'm never going to get to that point. Right. And so you kind of do it, but you dabble. Right. And so I think for me, the biggest thing when I, when I have people that are first starting out, um, it's like running a marathon, right? Like you're not going to go tomorrow and, and put on a bib and go run a marathon, right? You're going to get up and, and maybe go run for 30 minutes or walk for 20 minutes or walk a mile or run a mile or whatever that may be. Right. And so when you equate that to content, I say that's, you know, what can you post now? Is that posting a video twice a week on Monday, on Monday and Thursday? or posting on your schedule on Monday and Thursday. Okay, well, let's do that for the next 30 days. Commit to that, right? Once you get that, then what can you layer in to add in a third day or a fourth day, right? People get so caught up, you know, how many times have we heard about like the the 30 videos in 30 day challenge, right? And you do that. And then the 30 days and you're like, oh, holy crap. I'm so glad that's over. I'm not posting a video again. And then like your social media goes goes dark, right? So I would just pick something if it's, if it's one video a, a week, and that's your starting point, that's great. Then do it every week and be excited for that one video a week. And then after the month is up or after the two months are up, then add in another day and another day and another day. And you'll get to the point where, you know, you're comfortable and, and find that cadence that works for you, right? I shoot with my videographer and bat shoot 20 to 40 videos at a time, right? And then I have content for over a month you know? And so that's something that I do and the cadence that I found, but I know like Chelsea fights, she's like, I can't bat shoot to save my life. I have to shoot when the, when the thought comes in my mind and, you know, she normally has a couple of videos in the hopper, but she can't bat shoot. That's just not something that works well for her. Batching is a good way to go if you can do yeah. it. And if you're looking for content, go through the past 10 questions that clients have asked you. Just answer those questions. That is so that's valuable stuff to put out there because if one client is asking it, guaranteed there's somebody else that's asking it as well. And when somebody asks that question, you know, I I prefer to batch. I try to do it. I'm not the greatest at it by any means, but I have a note in my phone that's just video yeah. ideas. And typically it's questions that somebody asks me and boom, it goes in there. Now, when I sit down, now when I'm in the right headspace to shoot some video, I've got a bunch of questions that I can answer. Don't worry about changing your shirt. Don't worry about having multiple different wardrobes. Nobody cares. <laughs> I and, might and add. It's, it's I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kelly. Oh, Carla, I know you said, how do you get in the rhythm? And if you are one that lives by your calendar, put it in your calendar. Like I'm going to start and get yourself into that rhythm um, maybe you don't live by your calendar. It's hard. I, I don't, I don't know you, but a lot of people do. And if it pops up on your, you know, your to do's, well, today's the day I've got to shoot a video and just start doing it. Like everyone has said, and it just continually gets easier. It's kind of like role-playing and scripting and all the things it's outside of your comfort zone. So live by your calendar and put it there and yeah, I, I think an accountability partner is good too. Whether it's, you know, whether it's a buddy of yours who's going to follow you on Instagram um, or wherever else you're posting, or it's a fellow realtor who either is on your team or maybe in another state with your brokerage who you can just say, hey, I'm going to do X videos per week. Will you commit to doing the same and we'll hold each other accountable? I, I think that's a great way to get started. I've got a. Those are great. Buddy for YouTube now, but I'm, my wife told me I'm not supposed to use the term accountability buddy. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's... Uh, Misha and Dan and Paul uh, Wolford are accountability buddies. Uh-huh. So. And yeah, I mean that's that's something else. Follow people that you like their content. 
you know, don't just redo their content, but like, if you're looking for ideas, my God, there are so many agents out there that are doing a really good job with content just to give you ideas. You know, it yeah. has to be you, but there is a ton of trending ideas and, you know, information out there that people are doing some high level stuff, you know, pick up what they're doing, get the tips from them, understand how you're consuming content because how you're consuming content is also how the people that you are wanting to attract are going to consume that content as well. Yeah, I, I would agree with Joe. I have a note on my phone as well. So when I see something that someone posts, um, I'll write down that idea. So then when I go to batch content, I've got, you know, different ideas written down. Becca, Becca what, you got? Raise. what do you got? I have a question on trending audios. I was pretty consistent a few months ago using trending audios and kind of adding my personality in with them. Sometimes they were funny or tried to make them funny. <laughs> um, so are trending audios like over? Do you think they're still worthwhile? Um, do you think just mix them in? Don't make it a focus. What are your thoughts and opinions on trending audios and where that's headed? Well, I'll just take a moment to acknowledge that Joe without his glasses looks like a completely different person. <laughs> Oh, like, I don't know if I would recognize him on the street without those. I'm not yeah. sure. I mean, granted, he has like, you know, an, like in a little inch square on my, on my computer monitor right now, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would. Well, I would... Tyler has his hat. Joe's got his glasses. Uh, and... You know, I'm like very, okay, there we go. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, I was, I had like stranger danger over here. Um, so I stopped using trending audio on or stop using audio at all on my reels because I do talking head style videos. So, you know, where I'm talking direct to camera, talking about different real estate nonsense. And what happened is um, copyright stuff was happening. So they were removing a lot of audios from Instagram. And when they do that, it would pull all audio off the reel. So it would just be me and it would be like, and there was no audio whatsoever, right? Um, so that's why I just stopped using them. They were helping some of my reels to perform a little bit better. You know, I would get slightly more views with them. But my thing was, is like, well, if all I'm doing is talking and then the, the sound gets removed, like there goes the entire point of the video, right? Um, so I think that if you are using them, it should not be the only thing that you are doing, right? So if you're using trending audios to relate a trending style TikTok video to Instagram and to real estate, right? Um, that shouldn't be your only content bucket. It should be that and then other things. Um, because again, like if, uh, like, I think it gets you the reach. I think it gets you, you know, the views and things like that. But if something happens with that audio, like you just silently pointing to things or silently, like, you know, the the joke is gone if the, if the audio context is gone. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, th I think there's still definitely room for, um, uh, I don't know how to put it, but like the trending audios that are, uh, the trend, you know, where it's not a song, but it is somebody talking about whatever, and people are doing the the lip reading type of deal. That those probably are not going to get taken away. That's not like a copyright issue. So I know you've done a fair amount of those back, and like they're great. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I mean, I think it's still valuable. Yeah, and there are some people who do it incredibly well. Um, Art. it's not my, it's not my thing. It, it's not Katie's yeah, thing. Yeah. I think you have to figure out, um, what your thing is and maybe who your audience is in order to see whether you want to lean into trending audio and pointing or dancing, uh, because yes, there is certainly a, a place for it, uh, and there's traction with it, but if it's not you, you're going to lose people probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we've just got a couple minutes left here. I wanted to bring up uh, several different things. Number one is that Joe talked about how great Tom Ferry is in person. Tom's coming here to Minnesota in three weeks. May 8th, he's going to be having his roadmap tour. It is a full day with him and I believe Keeping Current Matters, David Childers. Yep. Fantastic presentations, great information for us, great way to connect with other agents. I, I, I would highly recommend going to, uh, in fact, I will, uh, I'll put a link in for- Do you want me to pull it up? Yeah, that'd be great for the roadmap oh, tour. So May 8th. In addition to that, May 22nd, Monday, May 20th, it's Monday, right, Joe? 
Yep. Yeah, Monday, May 22nd, we are hosting a uh, an event, um, location to be determined, but we've got an all-star lineup of uh, presenters from around the country, including Sharon Srivatsa, who's the president of Real Broker, uh, Eric Hatch, um, who else, Joe? Jesse Peters, possibly. Uh, yeah. Joe Herrera out of Colorado, if you guys have ever seen Joe Herrera speak or follow him. Really phenomenal. If you've ever read the book, exactly what to say. He is a certified coach in that. So that's a lot of what he's going to be speaking about in there. So May 22nd in the afternoon, please block your calendar. We will be out with more details soon. And then Joe, you have another event. Uh, yeah, we're doing a small little one. Patrick Keller's coming to town May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Tacos will be provided. Uh, this guy sells 150 homes a year, and he still has a life. He's got kids. He's got a wife, and it's pretty amazing what he does. He brings a lot of leverage to his business, and he's going to share a lot of that. So, yeah, so more tacos? And tacos. Don't forget the tacos. So. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's kind of about the time we got today. Thank you guys for being here. If you guys have any other questions, DM Katie. She's always available. She's happy to help out in any type of way. Same with Austin, myself. Uh, but yeah, we will put this on YouTube as well. So if you missed anything, you can go back and watch it there. But yeah, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thanks for hanging yeah, out. And message us through the Facebook group too. We want to continue to use that. I think it's a great platform for it. Definitely. Love you guys. See you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Thanks, Katie. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. Thanks. Thank you.